Look at these traditional families all around the world. They all contain members, grandmothers, who are long past their childbearing age. And archaeological evidence actually shows us that that happened frequently already before modern medical care. So while you may not have realized that your grandmother is something special, living past menopause age is extremely rare in other species. If you compare it to these animal families, you'll see that apart from a few whale species, no other animals live past the point when they can't have babies. And that's because evolution doesn't really favor us to live beyond the point when we can't put on our own genes to the next generations. So what made us humans so different during the evolution? Well, this is my quite different modern family a few years ago in England when I was trying to fit together career in science and being a single parent. Human babies take an extraordinary amount of care for a very long time. It is because of this that I was really missing my own mother to help me with this. And it made me wonder whether these old family members that we've always had have actually been in a key role for the success for their own families. So could evolution have favored us to be these grandmothers who can't have babies anymore, but are needed there to look after their grandchildren? Of course, in modern ways, we hardly ever consider the grandmothers as the center of the family and the society. But it's important to remember that in many other long-lived mammals, like the elephants, the success of this whole herd can depend on the knowledge of this old matriarch who runs the family. So to study human families, what ERC did was to fund me to collect thousands of family genealogies from these historical church records in Finland and to computerize them for multidisciplinary research. So what my team could then do is to compare the success of grandchildren living in harsh conditions like in our past who had or did not have access to their grandmother. And what we found was that grandmothers really mattered. Those grandchildren who were living close by their grandmother had much higher chance to survive to adulthood in these harsh conditions. And the daughters themselves had actually bigger families if their mother was there to help them. So it's exactly because of these benefits that the old family members bring to the success of the future generations that we've developed this very unique trait we have to keep living decades after menopause age. And we now know that these grandmother benefits are actually common throughout the world in different societies and different cultures. Of course, what's happening now is that we are living longer and longer. And there's a lot of really exciting research trying to understand how far can we push the limits of human lifespan. But there's surprisingly little known about the evolutionary limits to our lifespan. And the key question is there, at until what age are these grandmother benefits to the family uh, around there. So when we study this in historical population, we find that actually extending longevity only has benefits to the family members up to a point. We find that actually grandchildren who were living with grandmother older than 75 had a lower chance to survive, as was the case for those ones whose grandmother was in poor health and frail. So that really undermines the importance of healthy aging. What we've now done is bypass these old limits to our lifespan, and more and more of us are reaching these old retirement ages. And for politicians, that's often uh, a sort of economic bomb they're worrying about. But what if the real bomb is actually something else? Because what we are seeing at the same time is a breakdown of these traditional families, and actually people living further and further away from their relatives like grandmothers, and involving them less and less in everyday life and childcare. So elderly today in many places spend more time with other elderly than with their families, like used to be the case. So maybe it's not so surprising then that we are wondering why are people having less and less children? Many are bypassing setting up families altogether or they move it to much older, less fertile ages. And often the reasons they cite is that uh, there's a lack of safety network and difficulty in arranging childcare. Remember my mother, she was actually living in another country uh, at the time. When the grandmothers and grandchildren uh, do interact, actually benefits are often for both parties. So grandchildren can have better nutrition, better mental development, and, and so forth. And the grandmothers themselves show less deterioration with age in their mental health uh, and even longer lifespan. Grandmothers have always been important for the success of the families, and staying involved can extend their own healthy lifespan. So my idea is that if we had more healthy years and uh, older, older people stayed more involved, um, even in modern day, then perhaps uh, more generations actually would benefit uh, both economically, health-wise, and socially.
Thank you.